Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, you're watching IDB. I have a really cool video for you today. I'll be showing you 11 iPhone features that you'll actually want to use every single day. Let's go ahead and roll the intro and jump right in. All right, this first feature is for marking up a photo, more specifically if you take a screenshot on your iPhone. So a lot of people have this problem where they go to take a screenshot on their iPhone. And when you take a screenshot, if you click on it down here, it gives you the option to mark it up. But what if you forget to do this and you simply save it to your photos instead? How do you get back to that menu to mark up the photo? Well, inside of photos, I'll just take the screenshot I took. If you click on the edit button, you can see we have the pen icon on the top. If you press this, it's gonna bring you right back into this markup menu. So from here, you have your pen, pencil, highlighter, eraser, and some more tools. You can also click on the plus icon here at the bottom, and you can add a shape, a signature, a text box, a sticker, and also an image description. One more thing I'll show you with markup, which is really cool, is if you are using any of the tools for drawing, the system can actually make the shapes a lot more perfect for you. So if you wanna draw a circle, you can see uh, this is a horrible circle, but if I wanna make it look a little bit better, if I draw the circle and keep my finger held on the screen for an extra second, as you can see, it's gonna make the shape look a little bit more perfect. Next up at number two is a really small feature, but I feel like it's one that no one knows exists on the iPhone. As soon as you learn that your iPhone can do this, it's like one of those aha moments and you'll start using it all the time. So you know when you are cropping a photo in the Photos app, the way most people do it is they're on their photo, they click on the edit button, then they go down here and they click on crop and they'll crop in to uh, make any changes they wanna make. However, there's actually a much faster way that you can do this and you never have to go into the editing view in the first place. All you have to do is simply zoom in to how you wanna crop your photo and a new button is gonna appear on the top right of your screen. So if I zoom in here, you can see here is the crop button. If I press on this, then click on done, I crop that photo instantly without going into my editing view. All right, this next one at number three is really cool. It's gonna make typing common things on your iPhone a lot faster. So what do I mean by common things? Well, something that you might type out a lot on your iPhone, for example, might be your email. And if your email is long, that might be tedious every single time you have to type it out. Luckily, built into iOS is a feature called text replacement. If you open up settings, then click on general, then scroll down and you wanna click on keyboard and you'll see we have text replacement. Click on this. Then you can see here that you can have shortcuts set up. So I have one where when I type in CCC, it's gonna put in USD to CAD because I'm constantly converting US funds to Canadian funds. And you can do the same thing for your email. So all you have to do is press on the plus icon and at the top for phrase, this is where you're gonna put in your email. So I'll type in mine right now. So here is my email and I'm gonna choose a shortcut now. So I'm gonna say two of the at symbols is good. And if I click on save, this is now gonna be applied to my keyboard. And if I type two of the at symbols, it's now gonna put in my email address. So here, if I go ahead and open up notes and then do my shortcut at at, you can see it's gonna recommend my email right here and I can do one tap to insert my email. This next one at number four is something that's built into the system. So you don't have to set anything up in the back end. It's just really cool intelligence for when you're typing on the keyboard. So you know when you have to share like your email to someone or your address, when you're typing, your phone can actually understand what you're typing and make an intelligent recommendation. So if you type out my email is, and then go space, you can see there the system is automatically gonna recommend your email. It also works for your address as well. So if I go my address is, and then go space, you can see it's gonna recommend those addresses that it has for me inside of the contacts application. This is really, really cool, and it makes uh, typing and sharing information a lot faster. What is really cool is if you are in a, a texting chain, for example, and someone texts you and says, what is your address? You don't even have to type out my address is. The system is gonna understand that question that you received, and right away above your keyboard is gonna be a one-click input to add your address. Next at number five is a feature that iPhone users have been requesting for so many years, and we finally have the option to change this feature in iOS 18. And the feature is the lock screen shortcuts. If you remember, these lock screen shortcuts were introduced to iOS way back in 2017 when the iPhone 10 first came out. And people love these shortcuts because you had a quick access to your flashlight, which you never had before on iOS, and you also had a camera shortcut, which was kind of redundant because you can always swipe 
to access your cameras anyways. But here in iOS 18, you can actually change these shortcuts. As you can see, I have my right button set to open Twitter. So if I press and hold on it, I can open Twitter just like that. And I'll show you how you can change these. So on your lock screen, you wanna press and hold, then press on customize, then you wanna press on lock screen. And this is why a lot of people don't know how to change this feature because it's kind of hidden in all of these menus. But once you get here, you can change any of these toggles. So let's say if you don't want a flashlight, you can click on the remove icon, then press on add, and you can choose from any of these toggles here in the list. You have a ton of options to choose from, and this makes customizing your lock screen so much better, and you can get to any feature instantly. So for example, if you want instant access to calculator, you can set that, click on done, then on your lock screen, one click away, and you're in your calculator. Next up at number six is something called guided access. Guided access allows you to hand your iPhone to somebody inside a certain application and they are stuck inside of that application. So that is fantastic if, for example, you're handing your iPhone to a stranger to take a photo, you can lock it inside of the camera app. Or if you're handing your iPhone to a kid, for example, to play a game, you can lock the iPhone inside of that game. So how do you set this up? Well, inside of settings, if I back out of keyboard replacement, go to the home screen, you wanna search for guided access. So just type in guided, it'll be the first one right here. Click on this. All you have to do is simply turn it on. And I would also recommend turning on accessibility shortcut. This allows you to access the guided access settings with a triple click of the power button. So I'll show you exactly how this works. I'll go home and uh, let's just say we wanna be in music. So if I open up music, if from inside the application, I triple press my power button, you can see I am now in the guided access setup screen. If I click on start, it's gonna ask for my passcode, so I'll enter it right now. So once I've entered my passcode, guided access has started, and now you can see that that home bar has now completely disappeared, and I can't swipe up to go home on my iPhone. The only thing I can do is navigate inside of the application I'm in. And then also you can't access notifications or control centers. So you are literally locked into just this application. And then once you get your phone back to stop guided access, all you have to do is the same as when you started, triple click the power button, enter your passcode, and you'll be back to using your iPhone like normal. Next up at number seven is for Safari. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a wild guess that a good number of you probably have over 100 tabs open in Safari. I understand it's a lot easier to open a new tab instead of closing all of your tabs. However, your iPhone can get a bit bogged down if you have a lot of tabs open up, especially if you have an older iPhone with less RAM. So it is a good idea to close out your tabs every now and then. Luckily, instead of swiping all the tabs away, there's actually a much faster way. All you have to do is when you're on a website, press and hold on the tab button on the bottom, then you'll see an option that has close all three tabs. If you press on this, all three tabs can be closed with one click, just like that. Next up at number eight is changing your volume a lot quicker. I'm not gonna spend very much time talking about this feature cause it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty basic, but it is kind of cool that you can change your volume uh, to a bit more precise of a level. So on your iPhone, when you're pressing the volume buttons, this UI pops up, you can actually grab that UI with your finger and make more precise changes. So you have to do it pretty quick cause it disappears, but you can see I can now grab this slider and I can make precise changes to my volume right next to the volume buttons. Next at number nine is something called reachability. Reachability has been on the iPhone for so many years now, and it still exists on the iPhone, but I don't think a lot of people use it. And when you're setting up an iPhone, Apple doesn't even tell you that it's a thing. And I really think they should because iPhones these days are getting so huge. We have the iPhone 16 Plus, and we have the iPhone 16 Pro Max with the largest screen ever on an iPhone at 6.9 inches. So reachability, I believe, should be a uh, a bit more highlighted by Apple, but luckily that's why you're watching this video. So when you are using your iPhone one-handed, there's a really cool gesture that you can do to invoke reachability. All you have to do is a little half swipe on the bottom of your screen like this, and your entire screen is gonna shift down. So this isn't that useful on my iPhone because I have the normal size iPhone 16 Pro, but if you have like an iPhone 16 Pro Max and your display is absolutely colossal, if you wanna access Control Center with one hand, that may be a little bit out of reach. All you have to do is invoke reachability and then control center is a much easier swipe away just like that. And then another thing I really like with reachability is it also supports the dynamic island. So this is a really cool feature that Apple added which allows you to multitask a lot better on the iPhone. But the annoying thing is, again, if you have a large iPhone, it's way at the top of your screen. 
Luckily, if you invoke reachability, the dynamic island comes down with the UI, so you can access it a lot quicker like that. The second to last feature I want to show you in this video is AI summarization of web articles. This is really, really cool, and I swear I use this every single day. So I do believe that you have to have a phone that is supported on Apple Intelligence, so an iPhone 15 Pro or any of the iPhone 16 models. When you are in Safari, if you're on a website and it has a long article with ads and stuff, if you press on the reader icon by going right here, you are now in Reader. Now this alone makes it a lot better to read the article, but if you have an iPhone that supports Apple Intelligence, you're gonna see a Summarize button here at the top. If you click on this, it's gonna take a few seconds, but it's gonna summarize the entire article into just one paragraph to make it a lot easier for you to digest a lot of information really quickly. And the final feature I wanna show you is AI search in photos. Apple has made a ton of improvements to the Photos app, they did redesign it in iOS 18. Don't get me started about that. I don't like the redesign. However, they did make searching a lot better in iOS 18. You can search for unlimited keywords and find the exact photo you want. So let's just say we're looking for a tree in Maui during the summertime. If I go up to search, I can put in tree, then choose that keyword. Then I will type in Maui and go there. And then I will type in summer, just like this. And as you can see, it has narrowed down my results to 213. And as I kept putting in the keywords, the results kept getting smaller and smaller. So you can put as many of these search terms into photos as you want. And you can find the exact photo that you're looking for. So I'll quickly just give you one more example just because this feature is really cool. The other day, I was trying to find all of the videos and photos from when I went golfing in Vegas. And this feature came in clutch. So the first thing I did was I typed in golf and I chose that. As you can see, I have a lot of photos of me golfing, so this didn't help. But then I typed in Nevada because I think I was outside of Vegas. But here, if I click on Nevada, you can see my search has been narrowed down to only 11 results. And now I can see the exact trip and photos I was looking for. So that's going to do it. Those are 11 iPhone features that you'll actually use every single day. If you guys found this video useful or informative or helpful, please drop a like and also leave us a comment down below. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.